hello, and thank you all so much for joining. I am incredibly excited to be talking about Amazon advertising basics and essentials for beginners. So as we all know, PPC can be incredibly overwhelming. I mean, the name PPC itself can be a really confusing acronym when you're first starting to dive in. So today, what we're wanting to do is really cover the basics of Amazon advertising strategy. I'm going to dive into a few principles that are really important to remember as you build your own Amazon advertising strategy. And then we're also going to cover some things like the state of the industry and why PPC has become so much more important, as well as just general campaign uh, structure, keyword research, and bid ma management recommendations. So first and foremost, let's start with a little bit more detailed explanation of what is PPC. So Amazon provides you with a multitude of advertising options. PPC is one of the simplest that we can run and PPC stands for pay per click. Why I wanted to start with this is because it's really important to remember that you get charged when someone clicks on your ad. Now think about yourself as a customer. Most of us probably shop on Amazon. When I personally go to Amazon and I'm looking for products that I wanna buy, I don't typically click on listings that I'm not interested in. Now, maybe if you're doing product research as a seller, you might do that. But as a customer of Amazon, I click on images or listings that are intriguing to me. So keep that in mind when you're setting up your own PPC strategy. When you get clicks, that means your main image in your listing is doing its job. It is bringing people into your listing. PPC is working. If you are not driving sales or orders, it's more than likely a listing issue. How many times do you click into a listing, pay-per-click, and don't buy? Frequently. What are the reasons you don't buy? It's typically price point or reviews, or maybe the listing didn't have what you wanted. So that's the first principle that I want you to continuously remember as we go through all of these modules and as you're looking at your Amazon advertising performance. Am I getting clicks? Am I getting sales? Now, whether or not you can afford those sales is a little bit different <laughs> We're going to dive into ACOS and ROAS in a little bit and talk about CPC and how you end up making those Amazon advertising clicks more profitable. But before getting into that, let's let's talk about the flywheel real fast. So as I'm sure a lot of you have seen, you've dove into things like the honeymoon period or talked about a launch strategy. Amazon advertising is not a silo. Amazon advertising influences the organic side of your business. This is another incredibly important principle to keep in mind as we start building upon Amazon advertising strategies. There's a few reasons here. One, let's talk about how you get organically ranked really well. Of course, there's an algorithm. Of course, there's a lot of complexity and a lot of formulas here. But at the end of the day, you drive a lot of traffic and you drive a lot of sales. That is how you improve your organic rank right? It's typically based on keywords. You know, when someone types in a keyword, do they buy your product? And as with any algorithm, the algorithm needs a lot of inputs, a lot of data, a lot of signals in order to justify making a decision. So when we talk about Amazon advertising being a flywheel or Amazon advertising being important for your organic business, that's because it's helping your listing gain traction, gain data. Amazon's able to see when someone types in chapstick, they buy your product. It proves that there's relevancy to the keyword and your product and volume and that customers like what they're seeing. Another small thing to consider is that when people end up purchasing your products, they're more likely to leave reviews. When they leave reviews, your conversion rate typically increases because you have more trust and more loyalty. When your conversion rate increases, your organic rank increases. So when we look at Amazon advertising strategy, we make sure we're also considering the impacts we're having on the organic side of the business right? A lot of people say, should I completely stop PPC? This is one of the reasons we don't typically recommend it. Because when you make investments into your Amazon advertising and your PPC, your organic business does increase when it's done appropriately. This is super important. Now, the last thing that I want to dive into is real estate. Amazon advertising can be really complex. So this is one of the concepts I use to explain why it's so important. When you buy real estate, if you're looking in New York or if you're in Malibu, you're paying for amazing views, right? You're paying for a location. So that real estate is more expensive. Amazon advertising is very similar. You want the best placements with the best views. You have to bid higher, right? It's an auction model. So when you're 
typing in your search term and you're looking at the top of the page and you're wanting that top of the page placement, you have to bid really high for that. Can you always afford that placement? No. If you're not converting perfectly, you may not be able to afford that placement. That being said, when you lower your bids and you say, hey, you know, let's start with a 10 cent bid, a 15 cent bid, you're paying for cheaper real estate, right? And cheaper real estate typically gets a lot less sales. You're maybe showing up on page two or page three. This is really important to understand because your most important optimization levers are bid management and keyword research. So when I say bid management, this is what I'm referencing. You want to drive a ton of impressions, a ton of sales. You show up at the top of the page for your top keywords. How do you show up at the top of the page for your top keywords? You bid really high. On the flip side, you want to focus on profitability. You're going to bid quite a bit lower, but know that your sales and your impressions are going to decrease because now you're showing up on page two or page three. What people are paying for when it comes to Amazon advertising is premium traffic. Remember the old days when if we were looking at retail stores and everyone would watch all of the TV shows on you know real estate and opening a store? I don't know if anyone else watched Shark Tank or The Profit or things like that. One of the key things was location, 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 right? In order to have a successful retail store, you need to have an amazing location with a ton of foot traffic. This is exactly what we're doing with Amazon advertising. And that is why it's such an important principle to remember. You want the best location on the page with the highest amount of foot traffic. You show up at the top. You have to bid incredibly high. You want to save more money, have a little bit lower rents, but less foot traffic. You're going to lower your bids. So just keep these three principles in mind as we start diving into a little bit more specific strategies. One, pay-per-click model. Customers are clicking on your ad or on your keywords in your campaigns. It's doing its job. Two, it's a flywheel. Our Amazon advertising investments are going to improve our organic state of the business if ran appropriately. Three, it is real estate. We want more sales, more traffic, more visibility. You bid a lot higher and you buy the premium real estate. You want to focus more on profitability. You bid a bit low, bid a little bit lower. Now, once we have those principles covered, let's dive into how this actually applies. Let's talk a little bit about the state of the industry. I find that this is a, a helpful explanation to really piece together why these Amazon advertising concepts matter. Let's go to Amazon and let's type in vitamin C serum. So if this is a live search I am making right now. Why this is so important is because the state of the industry has actually changed quite a bit. Anyone who used to sell six to seven to eight years ago is now seeing a very different Amazon and a very different competitive landscape than they were back then. And the main reason is advertising saturation. When I type in vitamin C serum, the first thing I'm seeing on the page is what's called a sponsored brand ad. This is a PPC ad at the top of the page. The next few things I see are one, two, three, four sponsored product ads. Why this matters is because if you are ranked number one, which used to be a gold mine, you're still not the first thing a customer sees. The first thing a customer sees is a sponsored ad. Now, as we scroll down the page, we're gonna see a few more sponsored product placements. These are golden areas to be on the page. But if we scroll a little bit lower, we now see more sponsored product ads and a sponsored brand's video ad. More sponsored product ads. Why this is so important to consider is because just being ranked well organically is no longer enough because now not only are you competing with the rest of the organic placements, but you're also competing with all these sponsored product placements. Now, yes, everyone can argue about Amazon advertising saturation, but this can also be a really big benefit for people who are joining this space because as we can see right here, this product has nine reviews. They're not going to be organically ranked well. It's a brand new listing. And yet they're able to buy their way in to the highest traffic placement on the page, which is top of search. So when we are really selective and when we understand the customer journey and what a customer sees when they make a search, we can be really powerful with our Amazon advertising targeting because Amazon advertising allows us to target keywords as well as products. So if a brand wants to be at the top of the page, they can be. And it's actually relatively simple to be. You just need to bid really high on relevant terms. Now I'm going to talk about relevant terms really fast because it's pretty important to understand why relevancy matters to Amazon. 
If I typed in vitamin C serum and I saw an ad for chapstick right here, would I click on it? Probably not. So Amazon would lose click re revenue because they showed me a poor ad. And they would also lose the opportunity of selling a vitamin C serum. So when we talk about relevancy and making sure that we're bidding on relevant terms, that is why. Amazon cares about relevancy. So when indexation comes up and targeting the right keywords, it's because Amazon wants to give the customer a clean experience, right? All of their values are based on a good customer experience. And it's not a good customer experience to go to Amazon, look for vitamin C serum and see chapstick. So that's one thing that's really small and important to keep in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and reference that real estate principle that we mentioned earlier. Let's show a live example of what that looks like on page. So this is top of search for vitamin C serum. I've actually worked in this category. I use it as an example because it's typically like the joke product that people talk about in this space because it's insanely competitive and insanely expensive. So knowing this space, let's say a brand wants to show up right here. That cost per click, the CPC, the bid, typically is around nine to $10. And that's important to call out because as you can see, there's a $9 product right here. So if I'm bidding $10 to get a customer to click on my listing and they don't buy my product, I'm immediately taking loss. 100% conversion rate is not realistic for anyone. But this brand is taking a bet on getting amazing impressions, amazing awareness, and hoping that when a customer buys, they come back and purchase three to four more times. Right, so this customer is hoping that they pay $10 a click, but maybe drive 40 to $50 in sales, right? But that's not achievable for everyone. And that's why the real estate concept is super important to remember. Top of the page gets all of the traffic. Everyone who types in vitamin C serum is going to see one of these ads. That's just the nature of the customer journey. But if brands can't afford that bid, can't afford to win that placement, they need to bid lower. What happens when you bid lower? Well, if you lower your bid just a little bit and maybe decide $7 is what you want to bid, you're probably going to show up down here in one of these placements. Let's say you can't afford any of those and maybe you decide to set a 30 cent bid or a 40 cent bid. Well, now you're going to be showing up probably on page two or page three. And we all know how unlikely it is for a customer to go to page two or page three. But if they do, it's a lot cheaper. So this is why bid management is super important and why real estate is super important to start understanding. If you want highest traffic, highest sales, best real estate on the page, it's an auction, you have to bid for it. But you can't always afford it. On the flip side, if you start lowering your bids, lowering your bids, lowering your bids, you may find a point that's a lot more profitable for you, but you're gonna be sacrificing traffic. You're going to be sacrificing impressions, clicks, and sales, but that's okay, right? There is a chance that a customer goes to page two or page three still. It's just a lot less likely. Another thing to consider is when you go to a product detail page, as you can see here, there are also ads here. They're typically all over the page. I'm not seeing one here. There, we have sponsored product ads, carousel, three different pages of ads here. We have a sponsored display ad here and sponsored brand ads here. So there's a lot of opportunity to bid on a keyword and find the bid that's right for your level of conversion rate. And that's really, really important to remember. We'll get into a little bit more on bid optimization later on, but as an overview, that's what we're looking at. Something small I wanna shout out since we're looking at all the different placements on the page. For any one sponsored product ad, right? Let's take vitamin C serum. You can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, thirty 30 different sponsored product ads on page one. And then for that one keyword, we have 30 different sponsored product ads on the product detail page, right? 35 different carousels. I bring this up because there's a lot of opportunity to attract a customer but also because I spend a lot of time in the Helium 10 groups. And one of the questions that always comes up is why is my suggested range so different? And I'm bidding on the suggested bid, but it's not giving me any traffic. 
So one thing to remember is, again, there's a lot of real estate for us to bid on. So Amazon's giving you a suggestion that covers the average of all of these placements and the average bids from every brand bidding on these placements. So that's why your suggested bids aren't always accurate. They're not usually showing you the suggested bid to win the very top of the page, right? There's only four of these and these get competitive and expensive. You wanna win the top of the page, you gotta bid the highest. Amazon is showing you the suggested bid of every single placement and giving you the suggestion that you need to bid in order to win a few impressions, not the most impressions, not the least impressions, the average of the competitive landscape across a ton of different real estate. So wanted to throw that out there. I think it's super important to keep in mind. And again, reference that why you have a $9 product that's bidding on this placement, which probably costs them $9, is because of the Amazon flywheel. Not saying that suggestion. That would be really competitive for a lot of people. But you understand the mindset now of they're bidding on that placement because it's driving a ton of traffic and they're getting sales and those sales turn into reviewers and those reviewers improve their conversion rate. So maybe they're playing a much longer term game than you could be playing. That's why it's really important to understand your short term goals versus your long term goals. Now, I want to shout out another level of this that's really important, similar to bid management. We're going to go a lot deeper later on. But for now, we're going to talk about why keyword research and the state of the industry matters as well. If we stick with the vitamin C serum, this keyword is so expensive because everyone in the space, every brand wants to bid on vitamin C serum. And when you have more people at an auction bidding higher, higher, and higher, that overall cost per click increases, right? You have 300 people bidding on a car. They're going to they're gonna have a war. <laughs> they're going to outbid each other, right? You had two people there, probably not. So when we talk about keyword research, when we dive into a lot of the opportunities that we have with Helium 10, we're trying to figure out the long tail terms that don't cost as much because people are not thinking to bid on them, right? So instead of vitamin C serum, maybe we're looking at vitamin C face serum for sensitive skin. A lot more long tail, a lot less opportunity or a lot more opportunity to win those placements for cheaper because other people are not thinking to bid on them. Now with that, a lot less customers are typing in face serum for sensitive skin, right? So you're gonna- Anh chị đang bán hàng trên Amazon, Skybox cung cấp các dịch vụ dành cho các nhà bán hàng trên Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi như đăng ký brand với USBTO, cường khai lưng thêm, cung chân dồn scout, lưỡng tích và warehouse. Xem hình thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé. You see a drop off in volume. But sometimes that can be okay because if you bid on 10 of these long tail keywords, maybe the volume adds up to what that main keyword is, right? So something that we really focus on is creating keywords that are going to drive sales and volume versus creating keywords that are going to be a lot more long tail for us. So when we dive into keyword research and campaign structure, we typically focus on all of these different goals and targets for this reason. Our long tail terms are going to be cheaper to win because there's less competition and they're typically more precise, right? If I have a sensitive skin product, customers are going to be much more likely to click on my ad when they type in sensitive skin versus having those strong terms that we focus on for sales, volume, and awareness. So keyword research is something that comes up all the time in terms of like, what's the perfect strategy? What's the best strategy? It's really not rocket science, right? It's what keywords are going to drive a customer to our page and what ones can we afford to bid on. So the last thing I really want to dive into because it comes up all the time is how do we build a campaign structure that makes sense? How do we create campaigns and then also segment by our keywords that we're targeting or the bids that we're going to be breaking out? And there's a few different schools of thought here, but I wanted to dive in and kind of show you the basics that we like to follow and give you the reasoning for following those basics. So this is probably the biggest recommendation we see in the space. You have one ASIN and you create a campaign and you add multiple ad groups with that. Now, for us personally, we like to break out our campaigns by strategy and we don't like running multiple ad groups. There's a few different reasons here. One, as you can see, when you set a budget for your Amazon advertising campaign, 
It's at the campaign level. So if I have a $100 budget, as you can see here, it's going to be distributed across all of my ad groups. We don't have control over that distribution. So what we really like to recommend setting up is multiple campaigns. That way you can then segment by performance. So instead of doing one campaign with a broad match phrase, exact match, and then having little control over how much your budget goes to what, we create one campaign and put broad match keywords in it. And then if it performs well, we give it more budget. If our exact match campaign is not performing that well, we can decrease the budget. So this is one of the fundamental principles we'll talk about when we actually start setting up campaigns and building structure, but it comes up very frequently. So I wanted to touch on it here. When we create campaigns, we do one campaign, one ad group. And then we also like to do smaller batches of keywords. Now, I don't think there's any perfect answer on whether you do one keyword or five keywords or 10 keywords, but I think the biggest thing to consider is how many keywords you're putting in that campaign and whether or not you have a budget to collect data across those keywords. So that's kind of the second principle that we're going to talk about is creating budget distribution methodology across all of those keywords. And what I mean by that is if you have a hundred keywords in a campaign, but a $5 a day budget, you're not going to be able to collect data across all of those keywords, right? You don't have enough money to afford the real estate for that many placements. So just keep in mind that your budget needs to be pretty close to the amount of data you're going to collect across all of your keywords. A hundred dollar a day budget is probably great for 10 to 20 keywords. You may have a $1,000 a day budget and you can put a lot more keywords in there, but that should be built based off of your keyword research and your budgeting methodologies. A few other small calls that we have is when we create campaigns, we typically put the ASIN in the name and then we put what we call the product identifier in the campaign name as well. Because we all know that scrolling through advertising console can be really confusing. So when we go to create a campaign, it's ASIN, so that way I can easily search by ASIN within Ad Console. Product identifier, which just means, hey, what do I need to put in my campaign name so I know what products I'm running campaigns on? And then targeting type or keyword research type. So if it's sponsored products, we'll put SP. If it's sponsored brands, we'll put SB. That one's not necessary because you can see it in Ad Console, but it does help understand what kind of targeting you're running. And then we typically put our keyword research strategy, right? If I'm only targeting products, that have worse reviews than me, do product targeting and then bad reviews. If I'm only targeting keywords I wanna rank for, I'll do keyword targeting, KW, and then ranking, right? These are just very simple methodologies for building out your campaign naming structure that will help you scale. We'll put together probably a quick document on some of these recommendations that have it clearly laid out, but in terms of campaign structure, there's no perfect answer, right? There's no hack that's going to help unlock insane success for you. The real thing that we like to focus on is breaking things out in a granular fashion. Again, ASIN, 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 one ad group, and then breaking out our targeting into small groups. So that way I can increase or decrease my budget as needed. And then organizing my campaign names in a way that makes it easy for me to navigate within Ad Console or within Atomic or within any reporting dashboard that you all may use. These are the basics of campaign management. And then once you have your campaign set up and running, the next biggest thing is just bid optimization, right? We talked a little bit about this earlier, but something really simple to keep in mind is if your ACOS is bad, lower your bid. If your ACOS is good, keep the bid or increase the bid if you want to drive a little bit more sales and a little bit more volume. Your bid and or your CPC is one of the most important levers that you can pull to improve your performance. You always start with your bid to get your ACOS and ROAS within your target. And then once they're within your target, you can increase your budget. Increasing your budget will sometimes help scale if you're not driving enough budget within that specific campaign. So beyond that, another secondary thing to consider is, you know, some keywords you may want to have a higher ACOS on because as we saw, they're driving a lot of sales and a lot of volume for you. Maybe you want to 
pay $9 for the best placement on the page, even though you have a $9 product, right? Segment these out, put them into their own campaign so you can control the performance of them specifically. Uh, bid management is another concept that we'll have a whole video walkthrough on. I think it's one of the most important aspects of the business, but it can be really complicated for people when you're in the in the beginning and you don't understand how your bid relates to your ROAS. So we'll definitely do a full video on that. And then keyword research is another one. There's quite a few different methodologies between how you do keyword research. My favorites are relying on tools and also using your search term report. As a lot of people know, there's a difference in what you're targeting in the search term. There are multiple match types you can bid on. So for example, if I took a red pin and I bid on exact match red pin, I'm showing up exactly for the search term red pin. If a customer searches red pin and I'm bidding on red pin, that's what I'm showing up for. As you move into phrase match and broad match, that gets a lot broader if I bid on, you know, red pin phrase, then I'm going to also be showing up for a little bit longer tail terms. So those are things to keep in mind. In terms of performance, again, broad match is usually a lot broader. You're going to be pulling in a lot more search terms, covering a lot more placements, but it may not be as profitable. Exact match is typically the most profitable because you're showing up for the exact term you typed in, but could possibly be driving less sales for you because you're not expanding past that. Don't get too caught up in match types. They matter in terms of control, but in terms of performance, they're all pretty good performers if you have good bid management. So I think those are the biggest things that we are wanting to dive into in terms of campaign structure, keyword research, and bid management. The last thing that I would like to touch on is ad types because I know this can be a really overwhelming area of the business. In general, sponsored product ads drive the majority of the sales. And the reason being is there's more real estate on the page, right? When we walked through earlier, we saw 30 different examples of a sponsored product ad for one search term. Not only that, customers typically click on them because they don't always realize they're a sponsored ad, right? They look very similar to an organic placement. So sponsored ads typically drive around 70 to 80% of your sales. One of the most profitable ad types. Sponsored brands, usually another 15 to 20%. They show up at the very top of the page. They also have video and lifestyle images. One of the highest click-through rate ad types because that creative draws a customer in, but limited in sales driving opportunities just because there's not enough real estate. But additional 15 to 20% is definitely strong. The last one I'll touch on is sponsored display. Sponsored display is probably one of the most complex Amazon advertising ad types because they've rolled in a lot of different targeting options but can drive an additional 5 to 8% of sales, depending how it's utilized. Sponsored display is fantastic for targeting competitors, remarketing, or layering in video and custom imagery as well. So if you're looking at any of those, sponsored products should be fundamental core to your business. Sponsor brands can also perform fantastic, as well as sponsored display. If all of them are set up appropriately and optimized from a bid management keyword research perspective, they almost all will run within a 5 to 6% A cost of each other. So highly recommend trying some of those things out when you're ready, but we'll dive into a little bit more specifics later on or in some of the Q&As that we're going to be hosting. Okay, so to end part of this walkthrough, we're going to be doing a live demo of Advertising Console. So it's gotten a lot more complex over the years. It can be a little bit confusing to navigate, but for most people, this is the home screen of what you're looking at. You have an overview dashboard, spin sales, ACOS, ROAS. All of these things are flexible and or editable. So if you don't like looking at ROAS and maybe you want to look at ACOS, you can do that here. It's also the home base of creating your campaigns. So just real quick, we're going to go and create a campaign. You have sponsored products, sponsored brand, sponsored display. Sponsored TV is a new beta that some people may have access to. Sponsor products is the one that most people start with, right? It's the simplest to run. You're just targeting keywords. You're targeting products. You're setting up your bid management, all of those fun things. We're going to do a quick walkthrough so you can see what it looks like. You're going to click on your product. You're going to have an ad group name. Again, 
we typically run one ad group for one campaign. So we keep the name of the ad group the same. There's no point in us having to build it out. We typically put one product in a campaign and then you're going to set automatic or a manual campaign. We didn't dive into this too much earlier, but a good way to understand what an automatic campaign is, is allowing Amazon's algorithm to figure out where your product should be showing. So Amazon's going to look at your listing and figure out, hey, these are the backend keywords. This is what's in the title. These are the keywords that they should be targeting. And that's what an auto campaign does. It targets what they think is best. In the beginning, if you're launching a new product or cre creating a new auto campaign, it may not perform as well because Amazon's going to cast a wide net until they have enough data to really understand your product. As that auto campaign gets more dialed in, it typically is going to perform better, but you don't have a lot of control, which is most people's complaints with running auto campaigns. You can't control your bids for every single target. You can't really control where it's going to show up. Amazon's going to do what it thinks is best for your listing. A manual targeting campaign, on the other hand, is a little bit different. You can actually select the keywords that you think are best for your brand. So you're going to upload those keywords, upload the bid that you think is appropriate. We always recommend starting conservatively. Something that I always say is we like to make database decisions. So if I upload a bunch of bids and they're too low, I can always go and increase them. On the flip side, if I upload a bunch of bids and they're too high, I'm going to hemorrhage a lot of money and I'm going to need to decrease them really quickly. So don't ever be afraid to go too conservative. You can always increase as needed based off the impressions and the amount of traffic you're getting. If you would like to create some negative keyword targeting, feel free to throw that in right here. And then you select your bidding strategy. Now, there's a lot of different opinions on bidding strategy. We're not going to get in too deep here, but I like to use fixed bids because I typically rely on an atomic or an external software to adjust my bids. So what I don't want to do is give Amazon the ability to increase my bids up and down and another software because they're going to stack up against each other and maybe not perform as well. On the flip side, if you're focused on profitability and you're not using a software, dynamic down could be a good opportunity. Or if you were focused more on sales and you want to show up in higher traffic placements, higher real estate placements, you can focus on dynamic bids up and down. Not really a huge variance in either of these. Again, I like fixed bids. I like having control and making sure I'm optimizing towards my targets and no one else's. Then you just start your campaign name, start date, end date, and you are ready to go. So that is what the native Amazon Advertising Console campaign launch looks like. We're going to leave page. I'm going to show you just a few other small things. So other cool things to look at here is your measurement and reporting. So all of your sponsored ad reports are right here. This is a really important tab because you're going to be able to pull every single report that you could ever be interested in. It's a lot of information, not always fantastic, but your search term reports, your keyword targeting reports, your advertised product reports, all of those are here. The one that I find most valuable is the search term report because it shows me all of the searches that drove a sale or a click for my brand and what that bid was so I can start optimizing and improving my campaigns from that report. And then again, to get back to the native campaign manager, click here, sponsored ads and campaign manager. Now, Adtomic, I think, has done an amazing job of making this a little bit more valuable from a dashboard perspective. So switching over to Adtomic, as you can see here, summary metrics for your PPC campaigns, very similar to Ad Console, just a little bit better in terms of how you can adjust your insights, everything you can look at here. Something else I really like is they give fantastic summaries. So if you, they give you your highest spin targets right here as well as your highest ACoS campaign. So when we're talking about 80-20, it's all available to be adjusted right here. <laughs> Another thing that I really like about Atomic is your PPC performance is actually shown in a few different trailing views. So you can compare year to date to month to date to last seven days and last 30 days. So if you have any crazy trend line performance, it's really easy to identify here. As you can see, my ACoS has increased quite a bit in the last seven days. Big opportunity for me to improve. It looks like I started bidding a lot higher. So as you can see, my CPC has increased cost per click. 
probably bidding a lot higher, which is why my ACOS has went up a lot as well. So really great being able to view all of this from one dashboard and in the same level, you can also go down to some of these other aspects, ad manager and analytics, uh, both fantastic. Create a campaign, quick guided single campaign, a lot of different views here based off level of expertise and similar viewpoint, except for, in my opinion, a little bit easier to navigate. You have sponsored products, manual, automatic, and you can go through a very similar setup process but building in your bid strategy. So on the Amazon's in, you have to go in and optimize after setting up. With Atomic, you can set some of these recommendations from the very beginning. Now, to wrap things up, I really wanted to go ahead and reference the complexity and the rapid changes that occur with Amazon advertising. I would love to say that there's a one-size-fits-all solution that would make this course 20 times easier. Here's the bids, here's the perfect campaign setup, but in reality, it's a lot more complex than that. And you really have to build a customized solution that's right for your brand. This is one of the reasons we actually opened up with a video that's covering high-level principles, so that way we could go back and reference them and you can start building a custom strategy that's for you. Now, that being said, we're going to have quite a few other deep dives that are going to be provided both in Freedom Ticket and PPC Academy. And those videos are going to give a little bit more context in what does bid management mean? How do you set up all of the different ad types? Not only that, we're going to be doing a lot more hands-on content where we're going to have the opportunity to answer live Q&As and things like that so we can help give more customized solutions for all of your brand-specific problems. So... Thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know if you have any questions or if we can help with anything else. See ya. Anh chị đang bán hàng trên Amazon. Skybox cung cấp các dịch vụ dành cho các nhà bán hàng trên Amazon với mức giá cực kỳ ưu đãi. Vì đang tiếp brand với USBTO, từ Helen Ten, từ Jungle Scout, Logistics và Warehouse. Xem hình thông tin chi tiết dưới phần mô tả nhé.